again. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Hello again. So glad you could join us. And I trust that these next few moments will do you good. I know it always does me good. Trust it'll do you good too. We're in the middle of a... Well, I always, I know I always say this about the Psalms, but that I was going to say we're in the middle of a, another wonderful Psalm. Um, we most often are. And uh, it's Psalm 34. So if you want to flick to Psalm 34, I'll pray for us. And then we'll see what the Lord has for us. This morning. Oh Lord. Oh, we so thank you for this privilege of walking with you, of knowing you, of being able to commit each day to you. To be able to walk into each day, whatever whatever might be out there for us. We we can walk this day with you. And so here we are, Lord. We're we're, we're coming to you. Would you speak to us? Would you minister to us as we open your word in Jesus name Amen okay well um, we're in Psalm 34 we're halfway through <laughs> we sang last time because well it, it it we were encouraged to Psalm 34 I will extol the Lord at all times all the time <laughs> that's what it means I will extol the Lord all the time so uh, I really take that seriously and uh, you know as you know I think song is so important something happens when we don't just know truth but we express it in worship in song so even if you can't sing in tune beautiful to the Lord and it will do you good so it's, it's a wonderful psalm that uh, the psalm is very aware of a wonderful escape that he's had so should you and I be we've had a wonderful escape where would we be but for the grace of God let's never take it for granted okay so we I don't know quite exactly where we got to last time but I've got to jump in at verse 8 again oh taste and see that the Lord is good and that tells me that that, that, that if, it, the knowledge of the Lord is more than cerebral knowledge it involves more of our senses uh, and hence why uh, when we sing we worship we're engaging with our emotions with with more of our being taste and see. that's a wonderful phrase taste and see partake and see the lord is good okay um and now we move on to kind of <clears throat> where we would be but for the grace of god we've had this wonderful expression the first part of the psalm um I sought the Lord, he, he, he answered me, he delivered me from most of my fears, no, all my fears, wow. Those who look to him are radiant, this, this, is the, this is the grace of God, his face is turned towards us. It would not be good not to have his face turning towards us, and that's what we're going to look at now. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil. Don't go there. Your lips were speaking lies. Don't do that. Turn from evil. Serious stuff. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. We've got different... Uh, values now we're serving our savior we're wanting to be more like him we have his holy spirit within us the eyes of the lord are on the righteous there's that lovely you know uh, we've already seen that what was it his uh, those who looked him are radiant their faces never covered with shame and here we have this wonderful phrase the face of the lord the eye of the lord is on the righteous isn't that beautiful? His ears attentive to their cry. What a privilege. This, the Lord of creation, he's attentive to your cry. Help, Lord, I need you today. Where are you? Beautiful, isn't it? Oh, but listen. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Oh, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. Oh, God, this is tragic face of the Lord against them the righteous cry out and the Lord hears them and he delivers them from all their troubles 
The Lord is close to the broken hearted. I, I read something lovely in Spurgeon. I, I keep going back to Spurgeon. He writes things rather well. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Listen to what he says here. He talks about um, the advantages of the broken heart. Broken hearts think God is far away when he is really most near them. Eyes are holding so that they may not see their best friend. Isn't that? Oh, I'm sure you know. I certainly do what it means to have a broken heart. And uh, you know, broken hearts think God's far away. Maybe your heart, if, if, you're, if you've got a broken heart this morning, please listen. You think God's far away when he really is most near. Your eyes are holden so that they may not see their best friend. Isn't that lovely? Another commentator goes on to say this. Consider the advantages of the, uh, advantages of the broken hearted. A broken heart is acceptable and well-pleasing to God, Psalm 51. It makes up many defects in your service and duties, Psalm 51. It makes a, the soul a fit re receptacle for God to dwell in. Let me give you that again. A broken heart makes the soul a fit receptacle for God to dwell in, Isaiah 57. It brings God near. That's what we've seen here. It lays you open to Christ's sweet healing. Oh, isn't that lovely? You know, and just at the time when you feel des pretty desperate and lost, maybe. He's close, your best friend. Beautiful, isn't it? Okay, the brokenhearted, where were we? The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those who are crushed in spirit. A righteous man may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. You've heard that before? Do you know, I, 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 I love the way, the, the Psalms, you know, they're the most quoted book of the Old Testament in the New Testament, yeah? And um, there's a reason for that, because these men, these men and women of God, they lived in the Psalms, they loved the Psalms, and I, and I hope it's doing the same for you. And, and so all the time it's being quoted, and it's, it's being quoted prophetically, of course, speaking of Jesus. And... Uh, if you go to actually, if you go to one Peter chapters two and three. There's quite a bit of this psalm in there. <laughs> it's as though Peter, well, maybe in his devotions that morning, he was reading Psalm 34 or singing it. I don't know. But do you see these these godly men and women of old loved the psalms, lived in the psalms. May you and I do the same. He protects you. He protects all his bones. Not one will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned but the sorry the foes of the righteous will be condemned the lord redeems his servants no one will be condemned who takes refuge in him <laughs> now isn't that lovely i mean that, there's david writing that the lord redeems his servant he didn't know the fullness of the meaning of what he was writing but you and I do, redeemed, paid for, redeeming, buying back, purchased the, the, the one and only Son of God, the jewel of heaven given for you re, to pay. The, the Lord redeems his servants. No one, no one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, no one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame. Oh, what a joy to know the Lord. So, and back at verse 1, that's why I will extol the Lord at all times. With a broken heart, I will still extol the Lord. Those who look to him are radiant. Through it all, the Lord redeems his servants. No one will be condemned who takes refuge in him. Lord... This is pure gold that we're contemplating this morning. Pure gold, pure gold. That we can know you, that we can enjoy you, that your face is turned towards us. 
What a horror to think that your face has been turned away from us. Oh, Lord, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you that we've been redeemed, paid for at a price. Lord, help us to live in the good of this wonderful relationship that we have with you. We want to walk with you and talk with you and honour you in all that we do, think and do today. Lord, go with us, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, bless you. Have a good day. Keep fellowshipping with the Lord as you go, and uh, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye now.